Okay, and welcome to the world of Q model agile transformation. So my name is Paul Gossin, and I'd love to share with you uh, some of the ways that you can scale up agile projects in companies. So uh, first of all, Q model. Q model is a method for approaching agile that allows agile a more flexible process for problem solving and conversations within teams. Uh, likewise, Q model is a methodology for scaling up uh, agile projects and allowing them to uh, grow beyond the team size up to an organizational uh, scale. And finally, Q model is a system of aligning the strategy uh, of a project with the ultimate organizational goals and general strategy um, up at the business or corporate level. So this allows um, agile projects to scale and it also allows them to have a lot more support so that they become sustainable within an organization. So let's start with um, some basics of agile. You know, agile began, uh, began a long time ago um, and with a group of very frustrated software development professionals who basically said, stop the madness, we can't take it anymore, because they'd had too much of the overly directive style of leadership that was popular in the 1990s, where you've got managers giving them unrealistic expectations, dropping deadlines on them, um, project scope creep, and also mismanagement of client uh, deliverables and client expectations. So um, Agile was a fundamental pushback on this style of leadership. However, this presents some challenges. You know, as we scale ad, um, Agile into a universal um, business tool, we're pushing against some of the constraints that were imposed by the early founders or creators of Agile. So in a software specific context, you've got um, lots of specific jargon and specific language that is designed for technical teams that are working on very specific types of projects. So the first thing we want to do is scale that up into a more universal, flexible system that can be applied to any industry um, without breaking the essence of what makes Agile great and beautiful. Um, second is a, a really key challenge is what we would call agile for the sake of agile. So if the only purpose you're introducing agile into an organization is that you want more agile or you want some kind of learning or training thing, then probably your project will fail. And the, the elephant in the room perhaps is that many agile projects fail in large organizations. So what we want is we want agile projects that, that build into successful projects that you can use as a case study um, that you can use to drive ag Agile out into an organization. So it's really critical that we are able to scale those projects up. So I want to introduce a, a really key tenant of um, the Q model here, which is the concept of team coaching. Team coaching um, is also known as facilitative leadership. And around 2005, we created the Q model as a team coaching system. Um, but the key thing is that Agile and the Q and team coaching are actually very aligned. Um, if you think about the goals of the two models, they're really looking for the same thing, which we could define as a self-directed team. So look, you could think of it this way, uh, talent needs freedom. So if you're working with a very complex project, if you're uh, delivering, working with challenging deliverables, um, and you've got to produce some non-lineal or complex work, um, you need a high level of freedom or autonomy. So another way to say that is that, you know, uh, a manager or senior leader could set the strategy, but within a given set of uh, parameters, the leader of a team or the members of a team are are able to choose their own strategy and their own implementation process to deliver that result. So look, there's actually been a lot of research on this and um, creating that quality of freedom in a team 
uh, and that quality of uh, equality where people feel like they're member, equal members of a self-directed team is really the high performance um, goal of Agile. Um, and so this is one thing that is really a, a very beautiful essence of Agile. We've all been perhaps part of a, a great team where we were working on um, some wonderful breakthrough idea or breakthrough product and there's a quality that that brings which is really the essence of high performance. So the goal of Agile and the goal of team coaching is really the same, to create that quality of a self-directed team and this drives innovation, creativity, solutions, breakthrough thinking. So this is a key goal. So you could approach it this way. Let's say you wanted to introduce an Agile into a team. So the first thing you need is a reason other than just Agile for the sake of Agile. So you could think of this as a breakthrough project. So you've got some kind of strategic goal or strategic result you want to produce. So you're introducing that as an, into a team. So um, let's begin at the beginning, which is that right now the team doesn't know anything about Agile. So how do you introduce Agile? So, you know, a good place to start would be by introducing an Agile coach. Um, and so an Agile coach is going to talk about Agile. They're going to do a little bit of training, but they should very quickly go from talking about Agile to actually working with a real project and allowing the team to get their hands on the Agile methodology and use it to solve problems. Uh, the next place that we can naturally go is to what we would call um, an Agile leader. So the concept of leadership or an Agile leader seems very strange. You know, uh, Agile is a pushback against the culture of command and control um, that is still very popular in some organizations. So even saying the word leader or leadership is a bit of a no-no in the world of Agile. However, outside of the team, the people in that team still work, need to integrate with the broader organization. So this presents a particular challenge. Within the team, you have a very strong um, quality of high performance and trust. Outside of the team, you also have to align with the general leadership in the organization. So say you're a manager or a leader or a team leader and you're introducing an agile methodology, we could say that you are using an agile leadership style to introduce some of those key ideas of agile and work with the principles of agile in order to iteratively begin to introduce those ideas into your team. Of course, you have to be doing that while working on a real project, otherwise it's just agile for the sake of agile. This allows something very special to happen, which is the formation of a self-directed team. And so if you really look at what Agile is, you could say that Agile is a methodology for having specific roles, and each of the people or groups in those roles have very specific interests, and that you align those interests into a project uh, implementation methodology. So that's really what Agile is, and the core idea is that there's an implementation, an in Integrate, integrate, excuse me, um, an iteration cycle. And as you loop around that iteration cycle, each time you loop around, you, um, uh, you produce specific project results, but you also create more learning, better decision making, and a better quality of self direction in that team. So this brings a, a key point, which is that you can't have a big bang transition from non-agile to agile in a, an organization. That's a very non-agile um, idea and it simply won't work. You can't simply go from um, zero to 100 kilometers in no time. You have to go through a process of, it, of slowly accelerating in a stable and effective way. Um, which brings up another point which is that in an organization, you're always going to have some parts of the organization that are committed to stability and security. And those aren't the, the, the people or teams or uh, areas of the company that you want to introduce Agile into. They're simply not going to be very interested or responsive to the whole Agile conversation. So ideally, you're looking for a, a breakthrough point, which would be a, a project or an initiative or a strategy that's really critical to the growth or innovation uh, in the company. So this is an ideal point to begin to select or define an ideal Agile project and then get the right people involved um, on that Agile team. So designing this process is really 
the key to beginning um, an agile project effectively. But of course, you can never do this all at the beginning, which is why agile is based on the foundation of an iterative cycle. So each time you go around the cycle, you want to improve the focus of that project. You want to improve the, the the focus of the, the definition and the understanding of the Agile process, and you also want to create a small transformation uh, for the people who are in that team, so that bit by bit, uh, they become uh, strong Agile champions. So all of this leads into the Q model for um, Agile transformation. So. Uh, Agile transformation is really something that takes place first and foremost at a team level. So the quality of self-direction, the quality of decision making on the team is really what drives the transformation in an organization. So within the team, there's a very effective structure for creating a transformational result. And of course, that result might be a strategic result or it could be an implementation result. We need a breakthrough in performance or results that, that creates a, a case for why Agile is effective in an organization. So, you know, with the Q model, we always take a very skeptical point of view, which is that most senior leaders in an organization are not going to support an Agile uh, transition or Agile implementation unless they can see a very clear demonstration um, of the ROI of the Agile methodology. So you have to create an initial project and that initial project has to get very strong traction to so create a business case for why Agile should expand. So this is really the first order of business for introducing Agile into an organization. Um, so this comes back to the key idea of a breakthrough project and this is the essence of the Q model. Now within the Q model, Q model really is nothing more than a a, a, a framework for asking very good questions and having structured conversations. So um, in an agile context where this is most effective is in your weekly or uh, bi-monthly project review meetings. So the Q model creates a, a framework for having those conversations in a very effective way that creates solutions and um, deals with barriers or whatever is slowing down the success of a project. So within the team, the Q model is a conversational framework for uh, integrating the last mile of Agile. Outside of the team, Agile has a, another major challenge, which is that it must integrate with the general strategy of a company. And if it doesn't, you won't get much support uh, for that Agile project. So can, the Q model is really a system for having a series of conversations outside of the team to align the goals of that breakthrough project with the general strategy and the general business goals in an organization. Now, of course, things change over time, so you can never do that perfectly on the first go around. So again, we have an iterative cycle where each time the breakthrough project and the breakthrough team that gets clearer and more focused and more aligned with senior leadership. Now, there's two ways to approach this. One is top down. Of course, many agile projects start at the top and they're directed by you know, senior leaders or executives who have a very specific interest in agile. Uh, likewise, you can also start middle out. Often you just have a, a team of people who are interested in agile and they self-organize. Now, in truth, you actually need both things to happen. So executives are skeptical and if they don't see an authentic change in the people and the project and real business results, they're not ultimately going to support a larger agile rollout in an organization. Um, likewise, uh, one team or a small set of teams on their own has limited resources. Uh, ultimately, an agile, any agile project requires a protected bubble of time, resources, and focus so that they can get down to the business of producing breakthrough results or innovative uh, products. And so this needs support and that support can only come from the top. So again, you need an authentic middle out traction and you also need top down. So both of those things are a function of a successful uh, initial agile transformation project. And so this is really the key. Um, 
selecting, very carefully selecting the, the right agile project or the right strategic focus, getting the right people onto those teams, negotiating uh, a protective space to kick it off, an intensive program to begin the process, and an ongoing program to uh, initiate the iterative cycles, and giving them the time and space to kick off that initial project. Um, finally, you need to build a set of champions. And this is the ultimate predictor of the long-term success of any Agile roll rollout, is having a, a core group of Agile internal champions who are very passionate and uh, very committed and also have a direct experience. And of course, you can't teach or train or tell someone to become an Agile uh, champion. That's something they have to um, get through their own direct experience of implementing a project, seeing that the tools and the systems works, and naturally and authentically becoming passionate for the Agile methodology. So if you say, what is the key end result of an initial um, pilot? Uh, you would say that, first of all, we need to show very strong traction that the project produced strategic results so that senior leaders can see that there's an ROI on the project. Second, we need to have a strong internal group of champions that are iteratively getting stronger each time. And they have essentially become the internal group who drives the change out to the organization. Ultimately, the goal of an initial project is to build a strong case for the scale out in the larger organization and to demonstrate uh, that the system and process is effective and has that ROI. So I, I really encourage you to get a copy of the Q model book. You can dive into the world of uh, agile transformation. There's a lot of uh, a lot more data and a lot of insights into the process and uh, 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 for building a very effective rollout in an organization. Um, second, I also really encourage you to download some of our case studies. We have an implementation guide for organizations that uh, uh, has a lot of really useful pointers for how to get going and we've also um, written up uh, many of the big projects we've done over the years. So there's a lot of resources there um, that you can use going forward. Um, so finally, um, more than anything, I encourage you to step into the world of agile transformation, um, to build your initial team, to build your breakthrough project, to get the resources that you need to ensure that your project is successful, and most of all, to step into the world of agile transformation.